Hi there, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to use this really lovely mushroom house mold. We got this in our most recent Timu haul video. And if you haven't seen that video, why not check out our playlist and have a look and see what we got. Going to also use some polyurethane resin. Now this was a one to one mixing ratio. It's incredibly watery. You stir it for like 20 seconds. That's all literally 20 seconds and you pour it straight into the mold now as you can see here hopefully you can see it, it is incredibly watery to use it cures within literally five minutes so there's next to no work time with this um, you literally have to know what you want it for and just go for it which was what I was doing here so I've poured it into the base of the mold and also into the lid and just wasn't completely sure how this was going to turn out. So this was a completely new thing for me. Um, first time, I think it's actually, no, it's the second time using, maybe the second time is, no, it is the first time using this mould. Our previous one was different. So here we go with a bit of a time lapse where you'll be able to see it securing. So this is on a time lapse any moment now. Can you see it's gradually getting more and more opaque? It's, it's, fab. look at that. I mean, it's just, it's like magic. <laughs> it literally is like magic. Now, just touching it there, just to see how hot the outsides of the moulds were, because that was one thing I was a bit concerned about, but it was absolutely fine. Just testing it there with a the skewer to see if it was done. And literally, this is 15, 20 minutes later. I left it a bit longer. I wanted it to cool down. Uh, till I could handle it. I did have a few problems just removing the mould because I was impatient. Should have let it go completely cold, really. But there we go. Just removing it there. It's it's really odd in that it's not awful to use. It's not horrible to use. You just have to work very, very quickly. Don't panic, but work very, very quickly. And you have to know exactly what you want to do with it. Um, because, as I said, there's not very much work time with it at all, but it feels different to regular resin to me. But I was amazed at how much detail it, it showed up. Look at that. It's super, super glossy. It's white. That's the other thing. It does cure white. Um, so obviously you can dust your mold with different colors. I'm not sure how this picks up if you add pigments to it, but like I said, your work time, you've literally a matter of seconds for stirring in colors and things. And I'm not sure whether or not dark colors would go more pastel or whether or not they take at all. But I know that you can get this so it cures white and I believe there is a black version available as well. And as usual, everything we've used in this video will be linked uh, in the description box. So there we go. Look at this. I mean, look at the detail. I mean, you, once it's completely cold, what you can then do is you can go in and paint it. We've got a little something there. Must have been something on the inside of the mould, which is a bit odd, but it does just come off. A um, couple of areas where it doesn't look like it's cured completely evenly. But I mean, that doesn't matter. If you decide you're going to paint it, you'll paint over that. But look at that. Look at the detail. I actually like this. Just white. But you could add... You could paint it whatever colours you want. And then, of course, you can keep it in your home or you could maybe put it in the garden as a little, lovely little garden ornament. Um, if you're going to do that, obviously, make sure that you use waterproof sealant. There we go. So not to be deterred, I thought I'm going to have a go and I'm going to do something else, but not using the polyurethane resin. So I've got a little bit of leftover resin from a previous project, which you can probably see there at the top. Uh, that was from the bowl, the lovely, beautiful bowl and coasters. Also in our playlist. Why not go and check that out? I thought, yeah, I'm going to try doing something that's red and pink. So I had a little bit of resin, regular resin. This is ghoul resin, one to one mixing ratio. I had it left over from that other project. Added in a bit of sparkle. Love a bit of sparkle. And then added in some of the, um, the, the uh, alcohol pigment. In fact, quite a lot of the red alcohol pigment also from the ghoul resin kit um, that we got via Amazon. 
So obviously you can use whatever brands you want to use and you're happy using. But look at that lovely deep red colour. Now, I knew there wasn't going to be enough in there, so I thought I'm going to have to make up some more, which I did. And I'm pouring it into the lid here, nice and steady, hoping that we don't get any little bubbles. I did give it, uh, put it to one side after this and give it a little spritz with some isopropyl alcohol just to get rid of any bubbles that come to the surface. So I've got a little bit too much in there. And yep, yeah, I'd got some more resin left over. So, not to be defeated, made up some more clear resin, added it to the existing resin, stirred it up and then thought, I do want the base to be a slightly different colour. So this is what I'd got and yeah so i got the pink also from the gore resin kit and added quite a lot of the ink the i think it's called watermelon pink i think it's called to this resin and oh, i wasn't convinced that that was going to give me the color i wanted so i then thought i've got some white let's use the white as well which is also from the gore resin kit let's let's give that a good squidge there we go as you can see <laughs> and then I mixed it up thoroughly it goes like um, a bubblegum pink color that's the only way I can describe it look there we go can you see that some might say that's a Barbie pink I'd call it a bubblegum pink it's it is it's still a little bit see-through but it was fine for what I wanted so just zooming you in here so you can see and I'm gonna pour it in look at that lovely sparkle it's quite subtle the glitter in this one just for a change um, it's quite subtle and there we go we're just pouring it in carefully making going trying not to introduce too many bubbles gave it a spritz of isopropyl alcohol and then this is 24 hours later and it's the demold time and I've been I don't know what it is I've been really struggling recently we're trying to demold certain types of project and um, I think it's just where they're the smaller pieces and they're slightly more oddly shaped that's the only way I can that I can think of but here we go look at that you can see it's cured quite well you can see a little bit of the sparkle I love it. it's like a, a candy apple red I'd call this looks really really good so just trying to carefully remove the mold and look at that look at the sparkle from the glitter love it absolutely love it right there we go oh look so that little toadstool on the top there i think is supposed to represent the chimney coming up through the little roof of the mushroom house and then that other detail there on the front are the tiles over the window so it's got a little like um what do you call that arch shaped window there it's stunning the amount of detail actually that comes out is really good now this part underneath a little bit rough on the edges so i was probably take an emery board or a little bit of light fine grade sandpaper and just smooth it down a little bit so here's the base so here we go struggle number two <laughs> struggle number two i really love the color of this it actually doesn't remind me of bubblegum when I look at it like this. I don't know if any of uh, our, the people, anyone that's watching will know what blancmange is, but it's um, it's a milk, sort of jelly milk pudding that you used to give to kids, uh, young children, usually in uh, kindergarten or infant schools and play schools and kiddies clubs and things you know some people still like it now but I personally don't but this is what this reminded me of that and my granny making blancmange <laughs> anyway but look at the it's a lovely lovely color quite subtle compared to the red and look at that glitter look at that fine silver glitter and this is just a very cheap glitter that we got for you know I think it was a pound which is probably about one dollar 25 or one dollar 50 cents um from a, just a local like shop it's called the range and it has a crafting section and they sometimes do these you know little bargains but uh, i think that's come out really well with all the detail 
there again there we go there's the lid on it you could just leave this as it is or you could go over it and highlight some of the detail in the windows and those lovely little miniature toadstools either side of that front door you know i mean there's so many things you could do with this you could have you could have wintry ones that were white and blue you could have the spring type ones maybe greens and yellows and then summer ones which would be these colors autumn ones which would be oranges and yellows or lemon colors and then oh my goodness me you could have a whole village full of them for christmas so I decided to outline the detail of the windows using this deco art pen. It's my favourite go-to uh, for this kind of uh, pen and to give this kind of effect. It's got a real mirror-like sheen to it when it's dry. So there we are. That's one of the windows done and I have done the other one. And I couldn't let it go. I couldn't. I thought, now what else can I do with the pen? Um, mm. So I decide, and I wish I hadn't done this now, to outline this window. Yeah. Note to self, if I decide I'm going to do this in future, I need to put some on of, of the deco paint pen. Just like, you know, squish some of it out onto the surface next to me and use a fine uh, paintbrush instead to do this because yeah it's it's not as 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 fine as it could be and i do actually go on to make it a little bit worse but never mind this video this channel we always said we'd show you the good with the bad and you know things to learn as we go along and you know hopefully we inspire all of our watchers to have a go for yourselves. See what you can create. There we go, on your crafting journey. So just outlining the door here. Now you could, of course, you don't have to use silver. You could use colours that are a bit more true to life. Brown, usually a wooden, little wooden front door, isn't it? Um, but, you know, it's totally up to you what you decide to do. So here we go. I do also just outline the rim edges of the top part of the little mini toadstools there, either side of the front door as well, which I didn't show you on camera. But there we go. I really like those two colours together as well. It's really cute. So here's the final shot of this beautiful glossy white house, which, yep, I haven't painted because I just like it in the white. Uh, it could almost be for winter time. <laughs> Uh, there we go. I'm wondering now if you put a battery operated tea light in it, if it would show up. Hmm, I'll have to try that. And here we are with this beautiful red and pink one too. So I hope you've enjoyed this fun video. I had a lot of fun making these. Thanks for liking, sharing, subscribing, and we will see you again in a few days with another one. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>